But I want to yeah. also mention that, you know, we had the luxury of having a, a lunch out at Bob Evans yes, months ago. Yes, a very pleasant one. <laughs> yeah, and uh, look forward to more of those. Mm. But you pointed out to me back then the works of, you know, Jonathan Riley mm -hmm. Smith, mm -hmm. What Were the Crusades, and more recently, The Crusades, Christianity and Islam, a mm -hmm. British historian, yes. as well as an American historian, Thomas F. Madden, mm -hmm. as well as the works of Dr. Paul Crawford. <laughs> um, you know, these sorts of things are accessible. Yes. They're understandable. I mean, there's scholars who write a lot of scholarly articles that you have to be an academic to really appreciate, mm -hmm. but they're also breaking it down so that ordinary people who are highly motivated can get this and give it to other people as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when I became a Catholic, you know, Mary, the Pope, Purgatory, mm -hmm. the Saints, all of the usual issues, suspects, you know, mm -hmm. but I mean, the Crusades, I mean, that's the one thing that Protestants and Catholics agreed on. These were reprehensible <laughs> and horrible things, you know. So this was like a citadel off in the mm -hmm. distance, you know, mm -hmm. ruins, you know. I, I'm, I don't even need to go there. And when I went there, I'm like, oh my goodness, yet one more yeah, has one to more. fall. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, too many put those up as obstacles. I mean, w what's the impact of this, do you think? I mean, this is taking you maybe out of your expertise, but, but looking forward today at, at our appreciation, we have presidents who are quoting some inaccurate things. What does that really mean in our relations and our understanding kind of going forward? You know, I mean, th th there seems to be so much with uh, our understanding of Islam, mm -hmm. uh, so much with the, the, the turmoil in the Middle East. I mean, I think there's just so much there that this really uh, influences us. I think it has to do with our ability and willingness to defend ourselves and yeah. to defend our faith. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if we don't rediscover that, those who are not willing to defend themselves and their faith and their way of life are going to be run over by people who believe more strongly than they do. Right, and right, the Islamic right, right. world, uh, to do them credit, is generally not deficient in that respect. Right. But the, the we crucial uh, piece in the puzzle is that you're willing to defend what you regard as defensible. As truth. And yes. more and more people don't see Christianity as defensible. Mm. And you're willing to also desire that which we don't have, and that is you know, the modicum of a Christian social order. I mean, yeah. it's one of those things where even solid Christians I know don't desire a Christian right. social That's order. They want simply the right to kind of privatize it for themselves. And okay, my family and my parish, but you know, just give us a sort of Indian reservation as it were, you know. That's right. and, and it seems to me that something much greater is needed. Mm -hmm. And that is the social vision that our faith is inherently corporate. It's public. Public you know, and corporate, yes. I, I think That's of right. Jeremiah, yes. the prophet, one Old Testament scholar said that what bothered Jeremiah so much was not that his fellow Jews were in exile, but that they didn't know it, uh, right? Yeah, that they were so yeah. Babylonianized mm, that yes. they weren't even aware that yes. there was a city, Jerusalem, yes. and, a, and a temple in ruins. Yes, and this is a problem with the Dimi status um, over centuries. It can crush communities into a, a sort of Stockholm Syndrome, a sort of... Yeah. Yeah. So they were always oppressed and they felt comfortable and then... Uh, a good analogy. Or at least were uncomfortable objecting to it. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's true for many Dimi communities today. They don't dare object to it and have learned not to dare. Mm. And they don't want people coming in to object to it either no, because that's going to make it really bad for us when you leave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, stay with us for the last segment on Franciscan University Presents. My name is Joseph Frelich. I'm a chemistry major, biology minor here at Franciscan University. I love the atmosphere. It's completely centered around the Catholic faith. When I play soccer, when I'm in classes, everything is, has that same Catholic attitude. Myself and a few other chemistry majors have the opportunity to work with top scientists in order to combat neglected diseases. I was able to connect my love for chemistry and also my love for mission work by synthesizing chemical compounds. Franciscan University is academically excellent and passionately Catholic.